Do you want to be able to play your retro games on a modern iPad, iPhone or Apple TV using modern controllers such as the DualSense and the latest Xbox controller? Well now you can. Apple have finally allowed RetroArch onto the iOS App Store and this is a guide to get you set up and playing your favourite games. First of all you want to head over to the App Store and download RetroArch. Since Apple opened up the App Store to emulated software there are dozens to choose from but RetroArch is the OG. It's been around a long long time and it is my favourite. However, it hasn't got the easiest user interface to navigate around, so it can be a bit complicated and a bit daunting if you've never used it before. I'm going to guide you through from start to finish how to get this working just how you want it. Once you've downloaded it and started the app up for the first time, give it a few seconds for it to settle itself down, and then we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. We're going to first of all go to the update core info files, update assets, update controller profiles, the cheats, the databases, the overlays, and the shaders. Even though you've just installed it, these things get updated regularly, so do make sure you update it as soon as you've installed the app, just to make sure you've got everything bang up to date. This page is where you're going to import your content and access your games. However, first I'm going to show you the user interface. So if you click on that and then look at appearance, click on that button there, and then color theme. This is the standard user interface, but you can change the colors around if you really want to. I'm quite happy to stick with the uh, standard color theme, so I'll go back to that. However, there is an option to change the entire user interface to something a bit more modern. In fact, it makes it look like a bit of a PlayStation interface. So if you choose menu right at the bottom of the user interface menu and then select one of the other ones, you have to hard close and go back into it, but you get a much nicer looking interface. However, what I will say is if you're not going to be using a controller, this doesn't feel quite so good without a controller. So if you want to change it back, scroll to the bottom of the user interface page again, select menu and go back to the original one. We're currently in XMB. We're going to go back to the GLUI. That will take it back to the default setting. Again, hard close, go back in and it'll back to the original setting. Okay, time to get some games installed onto RetroArch. Now, this isn't straightforward, so do pay attention. Now, one thing to remember is emulation is legal. It's only illegal to play emulated games that you don't own. So all of the games that I'm showing you here are from my own personal collection, which I put together on the left-hand side of the screen in one directory on my hard drive. All of the games, or ROMs as they're otherwise known as, are all collected here. And I'm gonna push them through to either iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, anything like that. And as well as the ROMs, if you plan to use a Sony PlayStation or Sega Saturn, you will also need a BIOS for each of those systems. If you go to Libretto's own website, they're the people who do RetroArch, they will tell you which BIOSes you're going to require for each system. Get hold of those, put them into your directory, and then we're going to upload all of these to either iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever it is that you use. I'm personally using iCloud Drive, which I've navigated to here on my internet browser. It's in the download section. And I've already uploaded a number of the directories that I've got on the left hand side of the screen. So I've split the directory into two for the BIOSes for both the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation. So if I go into that, you're going to see the Sega Saturn ones. There they are coming up on the screen. There they go. And also the Sony PlayStation ones, because we're going to need to put those into a different folder on the RetroWatch directory. Now, if you're back out of there, let's get some games installed. If you go to the ROMs directory, you'll notice that I've got all of the systems installed except for the ZX Spectrum. The reason behind that is I want to show you a little quirk with iCloud Drive. This doesn't happen on Dropbox or Google Drive, but you cannot drag and drop a file directory into iCloud. It'll come up with an error message, as you'll see on screen in a moment. It says you can't do that, so you have to create the folder manually. I just copy and paste the name, so there you go. Get the new folder, paste the name into there, ZX Spectrum, give it a moment to refresh itself. And then we've got to go into the directory on my hard drive, copy those, or in fact, no, you can't copy those because it won't let you copy and paste. You've got to drag them across. I nearly made that mistake there. So drag them across from your hard drive, let them install. It won't only take a second with the uh, ZX Spectrum games. And there you go. We've now uploaded all of our games onto iCloud. However, although we've uploaded them onto iCloud, RetroArch won't be able to access those games until you put them somewhere that it can identify with. So we need to copy and paste all of the games into the RetroArch directory that RetroArch itself creates when you install it onto your iPhone or iPad. So once you've copied these, navigate onto your device, in this case my iPad, and into the RetroArch directory, 
and we need to create another folder inside this directory called ROMs. That's just so we've got somewhere safe that we can put all the games and not get them confused with anything else that Retroarch has installed. So we've created a directory called ROMs, press and hold the screen, and that then gives you an option to paste into this particular folder. Depending on how many games you're copying and pasting, this may take some time to come down from iCloud, Google Dropbox, wherever you've come from, onto your device. So while it's doing that, I'm going to go back into my iCloud account and go and get the BIOSes for, first of all, the Sega Saturn and then the Sony PlayStation. Now, for these, you're not going to put them in the same directory as the ROMs. You're going to go to the system directory folder there. There's nothing in there when you first install it. So that's me dropping in the Sega Saturn BIOS files. I'm now going to go and get the Sony PlayStation one. I've got three of them here. Copy those and then again, paste them into the system directory folder of RetroArch. And that will be all the BIOSes that I need installed into RetroArch. So now we've got all of our content uploaded into RetroArch, we need to import it into the app itself. So we're going to go to scan directory, going to navigate through to the RetroArch directory, then to ROMs and then scan this directory. That will scan everything in the ROM directory. Now, depending on how many games that you're uploading, this could take a little while, but we're not installing many games here, so it should only take about 10 seconds. This should. Once they've finished uploading, if you go back one step and then you'll scroll to the bottom, you can see that all of your systems are there. Well, I say all of them, there are going to be a few things missing. And I'm going to show you how to rectify this in a moment. But let's have a look at what we've got. So both of the N64 games are there. Both of the SNES games that I've installed are there. In the Sega Mega Drive folder, they're all there. And you notice it's downloaded all the available cover art for those systems as well. And the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, we've only got two games. We had three. Treasure Island Dizzy should be there as well. And in the Sony PlayStation, only two games again. We're missing F197 and we're missing everything of the Sega Saturn. We need to rectify that. So if you go to import content and then go to manual scan, we can do this manually. So you need to navigate to the directory where the Sega Saturn is. So there it is, Sega Saturn. Click on that and then scan this directory. Give that a few seconds to scan through that and then go back and then we need to select the system name. It's already pre-selected it here, but just make sure you've got it selected. So Sega Saturn, you don't need to do the custom name. You need the default core, which in this case is the Sega Saturn Beetle Saturn. That's what we want to use here. And then the file extension, Sega Saturn and PlayStation use CUE Q file. So just type in CUE and it'll specifically search for anything with that file extension. Click start scan and it'll very, very quickly do it. And there you go. Sega Saturn has appeared and the Sega Rally and Tomb Raider games are now there and playable. It hasn't downloaded the images for it, but we can sort that out later if you really want to. Same thing applies for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. If you go to manual scan, because it's still saying Sega Saturn, we need to change things. So we want to go to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum directory, change the system name to ZX Spectrum, which is just there, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and then change the core to Sinclair ZX Spectrum Fuse. And now Sinclair ZX Spectrum emulators use lots of different types of files. So TAP, TAP, and Z80 are two of the most common ones. So you can separate them with a space, but you can put both in there for your search function. Start scan, it'll do a very quick scan. Scan. And if we go back to the Sinclair ZX section, there we go. Treasure Island Dizzy has appeared. Now let's do this one more time for the Sony PlayStation. As you can see, we're missing F197. So again, go up to import content, manual scan, choose which directory you want to choose. It's the uh, Sony PlayStation one for the system name. Again, we're going to be using the Sony PlayStation. And then for the default core, we are going to be using the rearmed version of the Sony PlayStation Core. There's several to choose from. That's the most reliable one I've found so far. Again, we're going to use the CUE file extension. Start scan at the bottom of the screen there. It'll quickly navigate through that. And then Sony PlayStation, bottom of the screen, it's appeared. However, because we searched all Q files, it's brought in Toka Touring Cars and Gran Turismo twice. So we, if you just click on each one of the ones that you don't want, so let's go to Toka Touring Car Championships. I'll go through to the next page and just simply remove it. Same for Gran Turismo, remove it. We're back to the three. Like I say, you can download the cover art if you really want to. But now that we've got all of the games installed onto RetroArch, let's give them a test out. Now, the first time you run the game, it'll ask you for which core to use. It'll tell you which ones are available. I'm going to show you the ones that I use. So once you've set it, you won't need to be asked again. 
and there we go the game is opening there it is it's working now you'll see you've got an overlay of all your controls because unless you've got a controller attached to your iphone or ipad you're going to need to use the on-screen controls now to be honest they're a little bit clumsy um the shoulder buttons the trigger buttons the l1 l2 l3 those they are very very difficult to use almost impossible so if you click the arrow at the bottom of the screen that will get rid of all the on-screen buttons but you will need a controller but as i'm not got the controller set up yet which i shall show you shortly we're going to use the on-screen button so this is obviously working if you click the retroarch logo in the bottom right corner this goes back to the main menu and you can close your content let's go and check out super mario kart make sure that runs so click run i recommend using the snes 9x core that one works perfectly click run and the game will open and there we go super mario kart just a defining sound in gaming history fantastic and as you can see it works perfectly now you'll notice i'm not bouncing around the corner as you should on super mario kart because you just cannot reach the shoulder buttons that's why you're going to need to get a controller attached to your ipad or iphone as soon as you possibly can so close that one down we'll go and check out sega mega drive so let's go sonic hedgehog obviously run that you want genesis plus gx the one in the middle that one works flawlessly again run that oh yeah oh i'm happy now sega Oh yeah, Sonic, Mega Drive, on my iPad, oh I'm happy. Just give this a quick blast. Green Hills, oh this is just, oh it's so iconic. I remember getting this for Christmas. See, this to me is just one of the most definitive games of all time. I just, oh it just takes me right back 30 years to when this game came out. Anyway, let's come out of this one. That obviously works perfectly fine. Now let's have a look at the Sega Saturn. Sega Rally, genuinely one of my favorite racing games of all time and I still play it regularly. This is the UK version, that's the UK startup for the Sega Saturn. You might have something different if you're using a US version of this, but this is Sega Rally and does it work? Because Sega Saturns are a terrible thing to get right. It works! Sega Rally Championship on your iPhone Sega or iPad. Absolute heaven. Now, again, I've not got my controller installed here, so I'm using this on auto mode rather than using manual gearbox because it's just impossible with the shoulder buttons, and it works perfectly fine. Come out of that, let's give Treasure Island Dizzy a bit of a game. Now, this is on a computer, so does it work with a controller or the on-screen buttons? Yes, it does. It really does. You're able to control Dizzy with the on-screen buttons there, jump around, swap your inventory around, pick up the treasure box, and put it next to that wall so you can get up and jump over the top of it. There we go. Try and get hold of the controls. There we go. Right. It's very difficult to use these buttons correctly. I keep on mashing the wrong button all the time. But anyway, let's come out of that and let's try out the final console, which is the Sony PlayStation. Let's go with Toka Touring Car Championship. Oh, I do love this game. I used to play this at university with my flatmates. Four of us crammed around a single TV playing this. Codemasters really nailed multiplayer games back then. Toka Touring Car Championship 1 and 2. And of course, Colin McRae Rally. What a game that was. But does this work? it's looking pretty promising so far let's get past the boot up screen of course it works back in the original Toka touring car yellow and blue Renault Laguna oh yes it's taking me right back but yeah it's working a treat so let's get some controllers connected up to my iPad I'm going to show you how to connect up the dual shock dual sense and the latest Xbox pad so you want to be in your Bluetooth section of the options press and hold the PS button and the share button until you get that block come up on your iPad or iPhone, connect that, pair it all together, jobs are good. And let's do the dual sense. It's exactly the same process. So you press and hold the PS button and the share button on the left hand top corner there until the controller starts to flash. It's just flashing, you can't quite see it, but it is flashing there. There it is up on the screen, the dual sense, pair that together, press that and pair. Here we go, that's now connected. And lastly, let's do the Xbox One. So you need to press the X button to turn it on. Press it a bit harder than that, there you go. And now press the connect button there up on the top end of the controller. Press and hold that again until it appears on screen. There it is. Press that, pair that. All three controllers are now connected. There we go. Let's head back to RetroArch and see if that works. 
Now the beauty of RetroWatch, you don't need to do anything further. You see they've all connected in the bottom left corner there. All three of those controllers are now connected. Sometimes it will swap around the order of which is the primary controller in port one, port two, and port three in my case. But if you go to the retro pad binds there, you can have a bit of a customization of these controllers. So port one, currently it's the DualShock 4. In port two, I've got the DualSense. And in port three, I've got the Xbox controller. And if I really want to, I can play around with the default controller for that so if I go back down to port one scroll down the screen and if I really want to I can play around with whatever these buttons do if you want to change the X for a square square for a triangle whatever you want to do you can do it here now one thing I would recommend you doing is setting up a hotkey a hotkey is a button that you press and hold and then press another button to commit an action I set my hotkey up as the share button on my DualShock and DualSense controllers and then when I press that and another button I can do something else. For example, if I press share and L2 then I can save the state of the game. If I press share and R2 that loads the state of the game. If I press share and R1, the right shoulder button, that will reset the game, that will take it back to the very start of the game. And then if I press share and L1, the uh, top left shoulder button, that will quit the game. That will quit it back to desktop, or you can put it as closed content, that will quit it back to the RetroArch main screen. So we've got all these set up and I really do recommend you doing that because you can't really do things very quickly on consoles or iPads or iPhones. If you do playing in RetroArch on the computer, yes you can, but on consoles and on iPads, iPhones, it's a bit more difficult to do. So let's go into Sonic the Hedgehog and try these out. So I'm going to press the Share and L2 button momentarily when I land here. Here we go, right, Share and L2, that will save the state as you see in the bottom left corner. I'm just going to move to the right a little bit here and then press the share and R2, the right trigger button, and I've loaded it back to where I saved it from. Likewise, if I want to reset the game to the start sequence, to the Sega load screen in this case, I press share and R1, the right trigger button, and if I want to quit, I press share and L1, the uh, top left shoulder button, and that quits as well. They all seem to be working well, so now that we've got the controller working and set up, I'm going to change the appearance. I'm going to go to XMB, force quit, go back in, and now it looks like the PlayStation background on your console. As I said earlier on, this format doesn't work very well if you don't use a controller, but if you are using a controller, it looks and feels so much better. So you can navigate around, you press the circle button on the PlayStation controller to uh, select, press the X, that will take you back. As you can see, all of the games are there with the uh, cover art. I've still got to download the cover art for the Speccy and for the uh, Sega Saturn, but uh, it just looks a lot, lot slicker, and I just prefer using this one, so I'm going to stick with this one. Okay, so now we've got the controller all set up and we've got a lovely looking graphical user interface. Let's give GoldenEye a go, see how it works with the DualSense controller. And, well, I've got to say, it worked pretty well. I've been playing this for a few nights now and uh, it works all right. It's perhaps not quite the same as playing it on the old N64 controller because that's literally the only thing the N64 controller was good for this particular game. But the DualSense, it works all right. And it works all right on the DualShock and it works all right on the Xbox controller as well. Yeah, it's all all right. Do please forgive how bad I'm playing here. This was my first attempt at playing GoldenEye on a DualSense controller. So yeah, please do apologize how bad I'm playing here. But it works brilliantly on an iPad and it works brilliantly on the iPhone as well. And that's set up exactly the same way as the iPad. On TV iOS though, it's a little bit different. When you first install RetroArch, you'll get a pop-up screen saying, welcome to RetroArch with a web address to go to. That's what's on the right-hand side of the screen at the moment. This will allow you to drag and drop your files from your own directory on your computer to the RetroArch directory on your iOS app. But once you've done that, it's exactly the same. So connect your DualShock or Xbox controller in the exact same method you connected it to your iPhone or iPad. Go to import content and scan directory just like you did on your iPhone or iPad. Navigate down to the ROMs directory that you've created within the RetroArch directory and then scan this directory and then all your content will appear just as it did on the iPhone or iPad. And there you are down at the bottom of the screen, Sega Mega Drive stroke Genesis. Which game we're going to play first? Of course, we're going to play Sonic the Hedgehog. So drop down to there, open that up. And how will it play on TV iOS? Again, choose the uh, same core as we did on the iPad and the iPhone and there you go works a treat and yeah and put it on a big screen get a couple of controllers get your mates around brilliant it's just like being back in the 90s fantastic so there you go that's setting up RetroArch on your iPad iPhone and TV iOS 
I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, do remember to give me a like, a comment and subscribe and let me know your thoughts on retro gaming on your big screen TV and your iPad. And remember, emulation is totally legal provided you own the game that you're playing in the emulator. It's why I'm showing you only games that I own in this video which is why I'm not showing any links as to where you can get hold of games that you don't own yourself because that, that's illegal and Nintendo and Sega will come down on you like a ton of bricks. Until the next video, take it easy.